Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, my beautiful souls, and welcome back to the Manifestation Babe podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. So today, this episode is part three of my MBA student success story series, and today is also the last day of the MBA launch the Manifestation Babe Academy launch. And with that being said, I am bringing to you Caitlin's story. Caitlin is a full-time firefighter from Australia who completely shifted how she was showing up for herself over the course of MBA and how she actually used MBA to become a full-time firefighter. With the help of MBA, she also quit partying, drinking, getting into all kinds of random hookups that weren't serving her, and also overcome an ACL reconstruction surgery that caused her to really take a solid pause in her life and ask herself what she really wanted to manifest in this lifetime. I love Caitlin's story so much because it's yet another example of someone with a super intriguing background who just isn't your typical, I manifested a seven-figure business or private jet travel or whatever we see on Instagram kind of manifestation story. It is really so inspiring because she's had a complete shift in her identity, her self-worth and self-love that she created inside of this program as a result. And of course, Caitlin also manifested some really fun stuff as a result of that transformation, like for example, a whole freaking house, huge lump sums of money, and the help she needed to overcome a lifetime of body image issues. I love her energy so much, and I know you will too. Remember that the Manifestation Babe Academy closes tonight, the day that this podcast airs. So that's literally tonight. (laughs) You can DM me the word MBA23 or go to manifestationbabe.com slash MBA, or you can even click the link in the show notes, which I will post below to get inside before doors close at midnight. I literally cannot wait to see you there. So Caitlin, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast all the way from one of my favorite countries in the world, which as soon as you open your mouth, everyone's going to know where you're from down under. First of all, how's it going over there? I miss Australia Hello. so much. <laughs> yes. uh, so happy to be here. Yeah, all the way from Australia. I do apologize. Yes, if I drop any slag or anything like that, because uh, it just comes out naturally. But it's good. It's good here. We're in summer and it's 9 a.m. and the day is just getting started. So yeah, yeah very it good. is, very it is summer. Me. It is great weather there. Actually, where, which part of Australia are you from? Yeah, so I'm down south of Australia in Victoria. Um, oh, cool. sort of near Melbourne, but I don't live in Melbourne anymore. But okay. sort of a reference. Yeah. Okay. I need to go to Melbourne. I have been wanting to for so long. So I think that's going to be one of my next trips. Um, Caitlin, yeah. you are an MBA alumni, a grad, and you had a transformation inside of the program. So I want to know before we get into like all the fun stuff and the details of what happened afterwards, I want to like paint the picture, set the scene of like where you were before MBA and like what was the point that made you go okay I I, something's got to change something's got to shift I need to do something different yeah so I feel like I do need to go back to the very start for my journey because 
Yeah, it's been a bit of a wild ride. I grew up in a very small country town. Like the population was sort of 1,500 people, I think. Oh, and my it's God. Probably dropped dramatically. Yeah, dropped dramatically since then. And I grew up on a farm and everything. So the farm life was good and my childhood was good. But I think even sort of being small country town, you weren't exposed to a lot of career options or sort of anything like that. And I got to sort of 17, 18, when we finished year 12, and you're sort of looking to go to university. And there's all this pressure on me to try and figure out what I want to do career wise, like you need to figure it out, and then be in that career for the rest of your life. And Mm -hmm. I had no idea. And pretty much the options that were getting thrown at me were, you can be a nurse, you can be a teacher, or you can be sort of a trade, like an electrician or a builder. And nothing was sort of hitting me and I just thought that yeah there was again sort of something wrong with me because I'm like I can't commit to anything um but I was trying to so I just tried to force a few career paths at the time too I developed a pretty bad drinking habit sort of here in Australia there's a very bad culture with drinking and we start drinking from a young age and it's binge drinking like you are drinking to excess and you're blacking out and it's sort of something that's celebrated and so in at that time of my life all I wanted to do was party like I didn't know what I wanted to do career-wise I just wanted to go partying and I kept feeling like I was letting sort of my parents down and all that sort of stuff when I kept sort of quitting uni and I kept sort of moving on from different careers because nothing was sitting right for me and you're getting all that sort of stuff from like my mother I love her to bits but we butted heads a lot Uh and she's like you need to finish uni so yeah finish uni so you've got that degree like you've got to look good on paper and I'm like I don't see the point in finishing another four years of this course or (laughs) you need to get into that job now so you can work towards long service leave so 10 years time you've got long service leave and I'm like what is the point of being in a job for 10 years when you don't, you don't want to be in it just so you can get holidays? Um, Those are great questions so thought, to ask, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was good that I was sort of fighting back against that. And I just thought I was rebelling and um, just couldn't commit to anything. So after sort of a couple of years of forcing careers, I just gave up and I went traveling around Australia and literally just partying and did what I could do to pay for my living expenses and my partying. Like, and I was going out a couple of nights a week and yeah, sort of just having random hookups which weren't benefiting me and just wasn't, yeah, wasn't living in a very fulfilled, coming from a very empowered place or anything. And then I was sort of moving around Australia. I moved to the top end and happened to move in with two firefighters. And firefighting for me was always, there was always an interest in me. My dad volunteered firefighted, uh, firefighting and every time I sort of walked past a station or saw a fire truck drive past, I'm like, oh, that'd be a sick job. But I could, I could never, like, I'm not fit enough. I'm not smart enough. Uh, all these sort of limiting beliefs that were coming up. And, but when I moved in with these two firefighters, as I sort of know now was a massive sign for me, Yeah, which I was not connected to the universe at all back then. Like I was in my own little bubble and I'm like, no, I want to actually make this a career path. And I'm like, I know what I want to do. Uh, so I'll start committing to that. That was five years ago. <laughs> Getting into career firefighting, I think probably anywhere in the world is extremely competitive. Here in Victoria, you're up against sort of 5,000 people that are applying and they usually take through 60 to 120 people wow. each uh, recruitment process. So, yeah, and I I applied. I've applied that many times. I kept getting setback after setback, just keep getting rejected, like rejected at different stages. But I just kept applying each year. And then in 2021, I was sort of going through a recruitment process and I was sort of coming up to some physical tests like the beep test was coming up and I was feeling good like I'm like yeah this is my year and I was playing a game of basketball and I was going up for a rebound and my knee got blown out and I completely completely tore my ACL and did other damage in my knee oh no at the time I literally like this is this is the worst thing that could happen to me. I'm going into this physical job. (laughs) 
And but then I did have this sort of moment when they told me you're going to need surgery, and the and the surgery is for ACLs. It's at least sort of six months of not really doing anything, and then you can start sort of building up. And it's a long, yeah, sort of eighteen months till it starts feeling good again. And I just sort of had this moment, like, no, I need to make this the best thing for me. Mm. And it honestly, it it was because it just made me stop and it made me start spending time with myself, which I'd never done. And I was having all this time and I was sort of having these awakenings then when I was spending time with myself of this life that I was living just wasn't how I wanted to be showing up. And I like was so ashamed of a lot of things that I'd done in the past, just insecure in my body and just had all these, yeah, just, oh, it was just sort of sad when I realised how much I just didn't like myself or that I was just hiding from this drinking and this party lifestyle. And then along came Catherine Zenkina. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is when I met, like, discovered you. I discovered your podcast in that crucial moment of my life. And, yeah, so I come across your podcast and I just, everything you were saying was just ringing my bells of like, oh, okay, I need to learn more. And so I just don't like deep. I bought your book. I bought um, Manifest Year $1,000 in 21 Days. Uh huh. And I manifested over $25,000 okay, in less what? than 21 days. <laughs> oh my God. I, it was mind blowing. I was on the farm at the time doing my recovery. And um, I just was like, yeah, doing the book. I'll be honest, I didn't finish the book because <laughs> I've realized now. I'm a manifesting generator, my human mm-hmm. design. And so I just pop around from things a lot. Yep. <laughs> and um, anyway, I was on the farm, but it, like think of new ways you can get income. And I just sort of mentioned to dad, he's like, oh, there's all this farm equipment you can sell. So I'm selling all this farm equipment. And then out of nowhere, this is a very farm thing, but my dad decided to give all of us kids a truckload of canola to sell, which we've never done, which is like $22,000. And it just like mind blowing. And the day that he told us that you can sell this canola at whatever price you want, the price was $888. And I just learned about your angel numbers. (laughs) And I'm like, all this, my mind was just being blown. I'm like, okay, there's something here. And So then I just like, I knew I just needed to learn more and that this was going to be the next step. So when you brought out MBA, there was not a doubt in my mind. Like I had, I had money that I'd I'd just come out of nowhere and it was, it was just this knowing. So for me, there wasn't hesitation. Like, you know what they say? That was like my favorite quote. When the, um, the students ready, the teacher appears. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You, that was me with you and I just needed everything I just wanted to absorb it all and just had this feeling that this was going to help me finally have these dreams come true so Caitlin was, I just yeah. I love you so much you are such a phenomenal storyteller first and foremost and I just, <laughs> I just like I don't know just your energy is so infectious I just love everything about you and I love that First of all, how crazy is it that you discovered my podcast, but now you are on my podcast? Is that a full circle moment yeah. or what? <laughs> I did have that the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I hadn't, I hadn't been consciously manifesting this because I just didn't think that this could even be a possibility for me. So there's bigger plans at play here for me. Yep. And this is, it's like just insane. Yep, 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 yep. The best, I mean, it's like, the best is yet to come. And, uh, what's the other freaking thing I say, hold on this or something better. So the Mm -hmm. universe always has whatever you want, plus so much better in store for you. So I love that you're an example of this. Um, okay. So you were 1000% in, there was no hesitation. I love that. Thank you for being an example of that to show other people that that's also something that happens totally normal. And I love when I personally make investments where I know some investments I'm like, I really like, I need, like, it scares the shit out of me, but I know I need to do it. And I'm so grateful that I did on the other side. And there's some where I'm like, this is a fucking no brainer guest. And it's like, there is no right or wrong here and whatever journey you're on. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And when you were inside the program, like, 
what was like the biggest thing that you learned that you believe is like the catalyst for the biggest transformation that you got out of, of, of MBA? Like, was there an aha moment or breakthrough or something, or just a moment where you're like, you know, obviously from the book, you manifested, you know, the $25,000. So of course you were already seeing and experiencing manifestations, but maybe something MBA specific where you're like, oh my God, that was, whoa, what would that moment be for Mm -hmm. you? I'd I'd probably say that there were, there were two, um, the limiting belief blaster sort of working through those. I hadn't realized how much and how often in my life I was just limiting myself Mm. and especially coming into sort of firefighting and being a male dominated field and all these things. I was constantly just having these doubts like, oh, I'm not strong enough for this or people would judge me because of the shape of my body, because I'm not, I'm not a crazy fit um, girl. Like I've got love handles and I've got a, like a belly and I'm, I'm not showing my abs and these firefighters have <laughs> this, this walk, like this stereotype. And there was a lot of insecurities and a lot of doubts and stuff that I had to sort of work through with that. And just not smart enough and I'm going through these that limiting belief blaster which is just incredible in the program and uh, another farm thing I was back home working on the farm at the time and I was spending all these hours on this tractor and I'm like oh I'll work through this belief blaster and I just remember sitting on this tractor and just having like my mind just being (laughs) cracked open I'm like oh my gosh like we're like these aren't real like and you start getting this evidence to prove yourself that it doesn't have to be your belief and it's just freeing and like it's yeah like sort of sad and confronting when you realize how much you're putting yourself down but then at the same time it's like oh my gosh like I can literally do anything like yeah baby so that was yeah awesome sort of that like game changer for me because whilst I was in MBA there was a recruitment process again for the fireys and fireys, firefighters, if that's uh, like <laughs> as well. Um, <laughs> and I was sort of going through them. There's aptitude tests, like written tests, um, and then physical tests. And each time there was a new test, I'd get these new thoughts. And I'm like, no, like this is like we could start back in myself. So that was huge. And then probably the other thing for me was the inner child work. And I didn't realise how much of an effect that would have on me. I had a I've had I had a good childhood like I um in a family my parents are very much in love and I can't remember too much like there wasn't any sort of pain or negativity in our household yes some sort of thing outside but I'd always sort of when I heard in a child work I sort of felt guilty because I'm like I shouldn't have anything mm, like because yeah. I've got I've had this great childhood and I think that's been a big thing for me too like I I, I suppose I limit myself in that way that my problems aren't worthy enough, like that sort of stuff. Um, and I'm a big one. I was a big one of burying things and just not showing vulnerability and um, sort of my feminine side is weakness, all this stuff just to try and show up as this, what I thought had to be this strong, capable person, which is just another thing that I've learned completely bullshit, if I'm allowed to say that. Oh, Sorry, yeah. But, um, <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) And so I went into the inner child meditation and the, my inner child that came up, she was just broken and she was so sad and it was, it was really hard. It was really confronting to try and then get to a place where I could, yeah, sort of get close to her and hug her. And when I did, I was just crying. Like it was just this huge release because I also wasn't someone who would cry. I wouldn't let myself cry in the past. Like you just, no, I'm too strong for that, which is just ridiculous. yeah, yeah. And I had so I had that sort of freeing moment, and then I went into one of your breath works, which I'll be honest, the breath work I had a lot of um, <laughs> resistance around them, and I was struggling with them. This was the third one I was doing, and I was in this support group with these Melbourne women, and they were saying all these sort of uh, revelations they were having, all these like beautiful moments and these visions and all this and I'm like I'm not having any of this I'm like this is hard I'm like it hurts me I can't I can't do anything and I was really resisting doing it but I 
for some reason decided to do it straight after that inner child work. And that breath work session was, it was a really hard one. I really struggled to keep staying in the breath. And then I was like, kept sort of having thoughts like, oh, this is doing nothing. Like I should stop and like keep going. And in the end, there was this in sort of that like meditative moment at the end when you're just sort of back in your breath. I had this sort of vision and it was this sunset and I'm walking towards this sunset and I'm holding hands with my little inner child, Aww. like this little, little version of me. And she was like dancing and we sputter around. It was just beautiful. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's just like this forgiveness in this, just to be able to show up for them. And just, oh, it just blows my mind. It gives me goosebumps, like just how much, yeah, you can sort of forgive yourself and then support yourself. Mm. It's sort of simple well it's somewhat simple <laughs> it's like that I yeah. love I love right. that you mentioned because I know that there's probably a lot of people who maybe are struggling with their childhoods and just like you said they feel guilty because their parents were such incredible parents and I just want to speak to that for a second because you just totally like blew my mind to this and just like opened me up to the fact that like inner child work or just like bringing up or healing things from your childhood like there's so many other factors to it than just your parents right like even raising my little baby boy I know that as much as I want to control his whole world like this little guy is gonna fall someone's gonna upset him a little girl or boy is gonna break his heart like just there's so many different factors and so anyone out there who is like I don't want to blame my parents my parents are amazing people has nothing to do with that it's just our unconscious minds are so wide open from the ages of zero to seven years old. And there's so many things that happen that then we don't even realize are literally the seeds behind these huge trees that have sprouted in our adulthood where we're like, where the fuck did this tree come from? And I don't like it anymore. Get rid of it. <laughs> so you, you like go back and you got to yeah. uproot it and just do something else that they recycle or replant it somewhere else replant something better, whatever, whatever metaphor works for you. Uh, but I just, I love that you mentioned that because that just gave me a whole nother perspective to share with people. So thank you. Um, how has life been since MBA? So it's been some, some time. I forgot which round did you go in in 2021? Uh, 2022, the March one. Yeah. There we go. So okay. Last so year. Just, just Perfect. So it's been about six ish months since the end of that program because it's about five months long. So, what has life been for you, Caitlin? <laughs> uh, life feels completely, completely different. I am now a full time firefighter. Yay. And thank I, you so much for your service yeah. and saving lives out there. Seriously. Thank you. Of course. Um, no, thank you. It, I got into that. I got um, the phone call on the 24th of June, which was, um, which turned out to be exactly one year after I had surgery on my knee, which was mind blowing. And I, yeah, so just all that just came true. And that was sort of a moment when I realized all this work, um, how much sort of difference it had when they called me and they're like, we would like to recruit you as a firefighter it just felt like I'm like, of course you are. Like, I know that this is happening. Yes. Like, I've just done all this work and realized myself becoming a firefighter. I'm like, I know I am. Like, I had to sort of weirdly act more excited on the phone. I'm like, oh, thank you. But I'm like, I know that this is happening. Like, it's like, it was um, surreal. But what life is like as well, like I've been sort of working in male-dominated fields for a very, very long time and didn't realise how much I sort of, um, sort of, littled myself if that's the right words but just made myself into this version that what I thought would needed to be to be part of the guys and be be one of the blokes and um, just fit in with them and to not cause any trouble because women are painted in this this picture that oh we kind of get we're getting jobs just because they need women in the roles or or uh, all this sort of stuff that there's negativity around women in there and I I held on to that for a long time not realizing that that was just all my self-worth that I was sort of limiting myself on too but now I'm like I'm showing up I'm showing these guys this version of me that I'm just being myself completely like 
I'm going to Harry Styles concert on Friday night <laughs> and I'm telling these guys, yeah, I'm going to Harry Styles and they're all rolling their eyes and I'm like, so when I'm when said, what's your neighbours like? I'm like, oh, they're all pretty quiet. They probably don't like me singing Taylor Swift at the top of my lungs in the shower. And they just sort of look at you like, what? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I'm not cool, but I'm like, I don't care anymore. Like, this is yes. who I am. And I'm asking for help. Like, I thought I had to sort of, sort of muscle out this strength and just not show that I had weakness and everything. But the truth is women do have, a disadvantage with sort of just um, our physical genetics. And by me asking for help and advice, I'm learning different techniques of how to hold a hose or how to do things, which in the past I wouldn't have asked for help because I didn't want to be seen as weak. Like it's just, it's NBA is just giving me this strength just to be able to show up as myself. And it's just sort of empowering me to just be this best version of myself. And Oh, it's just, it's insane. I can't believe sort of where I've come from. And I sort of was having little manifestations like that were coming through as well, which would just, which would make me laugh in a way. I was, when I was in the middle of the program, I was living in Melbourne, learning about the laws of the universe and uh, learning about the laws of cause and effect. And which, if you don't know what that is, get this program like I'll um <laughs> selfishly, selfishly plug you right now but um <laughs> I was learning about that and I was walking my little dog um Kevin and there was all this rubbish around and I kept stepping in people's dog poo because I wouldn't pick up their dog poo and I'm like right I'm gonna start picking up rubbish and I'm gonna start picking up people's dog poo <laughs> but, um, just to do a bit and I had this moment one of these days, I'm like, I'm going through so many poo bags. Like, I'm like, this is just going to be expensive. <laughs> and the next day I was walking through the park and it's all this little green thing. And there is like a brand new fresh roll of dog poo bags just <laughs> waiting for me. Like, it's just there. I'm like, thank you. Like, just little things and they're huge things. Like, it's just, it was, uh, kept happening. Like, I wanted to heal my relationship with food. I've always been sort of a big emotional eater and just not connecting uh, with my body and um, started MBA and wanted to do this support group with Melbourne girls and in comes a food empowerment coach. Of course. Like, right. <laughs> of course. Like, yes, I'll sign up with you. And then I was sort of doing this body confidence work and I'm like, I want to do a photo shoot. In pops this um, photographer into my DMs. Like it's just all this stuff has just started aligning and I've had my parents buy me a house up here in Mildura. Like I can't no believe way. The life that I'm living. Yeah. That is like, so exciting. Just, <laughs> there's just these physical transformations, like these physical manifestations, but honestly who I am feeling inside, like this freedom and empowerment and just so sure of myself and everything it's it's incredible and it's just a full credit to your course of how you can help even like women just we can feel so much shame and sort of and like be so like afraid of everything we've done in the past and have yeah regrets and all this but you can get to this place where you can forgive yourself and then just be free and then move forward and have your dreams come true and it's just incredible oh my and, gosh oh, just I get I wish I could just give everyone this feeling that I'm feeling. It's just the best. I just want to like jump through the screen and just give you a big hug. Like seriously, you are such an inspiration. You're so heartwarming, like so genuine, such a beautiful soul. I love the life that you have created. And I know that you have barely just begun. And there's so much more amazing stuff around the corner for you. And I cannot wait to hear lots of updates all the time from you of what else you've manifested because you're just you're just on a roll babe like you're just such on a roll um my final question for you is okay let's just say there's someone listening to this episode right now and they're very intrigued with your story and they're like oh my gosh I feel like I see myself in Caitlin I'm on the fence but I'm nervous I'm anxious is it worth it is it gonna work for me like all of these thoughts that are just so normal to have is there any advice that you have for this person, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think yes, so just speaking from my point of view and sort of what helped me is like 
if you're having any of these sort of little visions or these little like um, fires inside of you that it's like these these dreams where you're like, oh, I would love to do that. Like what I had with firefighting. These there was there was little seeds planted throughout my life of what I wanted to do. Like if you were feeling lost with your purpose as well, that they're in you for a reason, and that that you wouldn't be dreaming of those visions if you couldn't be able to make them become a reality. And this course is literally everything that you need to learn to get there. And I. And to just invest in yourself and give yourself the opportunity to allow yourself to live that dream life. Like I just, it's worth the risk. Like it's worth stepping into that fear. And the best thing that you can do is learn to step into that fear and that, and challenge yourself because that's where the growth comes from. And if you are worried about money, like I get it, it can seem like a big investment, but what you'll also learn in the course is the like law of compensation. You kind of need to spend money if you want to receive money. Like, and that's the biggest thing I've learned by investing in myself. I've been getting all these sort of rewards as well. Like you've kind of got to put it out there to get it back. So yeah. <laughs> take, the leap, take the leap, just, yeah, it, just do it for yourself. Like it's, I, I, I can't even explain how amazing your life can be. Like this is six months since I finished MBA. Like it's it's been so short and I've got this for the rest of my life. And yes, like you said, I've I know that there's more for me too. Like I've like firefighting's yes, this amazing role, but I've got I know I'm there's more for me, whatever that looks like, uh -huh. I don't know. Uh-huh. Um, and that's I know that I can have it because I can keep coming back to this course and just keep oh my gosh. Taking it. So do it for yourself. It's it's the best investment you can possibly make. Kaylin, I can't wait for you to experience the new updates that I'm putting in this next round, which oh, is God. to anyone listening, like you get lifetime access. So as long as I am adding things, changing things, which I have an, like this almost sick and twisted obsession of just like constantly learning and <laughs> giving my students like the best of the best knowledge and information and processes and modalities and everything else that I pick up on because I just genuinely want to see you thrive. Caitlin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You are fucking amazing. And I cannot wait to see like where life takes you. Oh, no, thank you so much. Honestly, the best part of this is being able to, yeah, full circle and be able to thank, personally thank the person who's literally changed my life. So thank you so much for having me on. And yeah, I just hope this, I know my story with being a firefighter is probably different, but if you can relate to anything I love it. in there, just thank you. Yeah. We, I didn't know we needed a firefighter. So thank you so much for coming on here. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.